Hey y'all, this is Mrs. Weathington and this is the Identifying Text Structure Worksheet Tutorial. Um, you will need to screenshot this page as well as this page here. They are both in Canvas. So once you have done that, we'll go in and get started. So we'll choose markup and you will need a highlighter and also a marker. All right, so go in and highlight identifying text structure. And we will highlight the instructions, read the passages, identify the text structure, and write information from the passage into the appropriate graphic organizer. Before we uh, read the passage, we're gonna read these questions and then we will read the passage because for those of you that have been with me before, you know that we always read the questions and the answer choices um, before we actually read the passage. All right, so in the first box, which passage is chronological? Put information from the passage onto the graphic organizer. And my suggestion to you would be use your text structure notes that we did earlier in class today and they will help you answer these questions much easier. So the next question, which passage is a compare and contrast? Put information from the passage onto the graphic organizer. Which passage is sequence? Put information from the passage onto the graphic organizer. Which passage is cause and effect? Which passage is problem and solution? Which passage is chronological? So now that you have all of that, go on and click done. Click done again. And let's scoot over here to the passages. So we will edit. And starting with passage one, chemical and physical changes. All matter, all things can be changed in two ways, chemically and physically. Both chemical and physical changes affect the state of matter. Physical changes are those that do not change the matter or identity or identity of the matter. For example, clay will bend or flatten if squeezed, but it will still be clay. Changing the shape of clay is a physical change and does not change the matter's identity. Chemical changes turn the matter into a new kind of matter with different properties. For example, when paper is burnt, <clears throat> excuse me, it becomes ash, it will never be paper again. The difference between them is that physical changes are temporary or only last for a little while and chemical changes are permanent, which means they last forever. Physical and chemical changes both affect states of matter. So if you look at our notes, um, description, sequence, cause and effect, problem, solution, compare, contrast. Um, I see two different types that this could possibly be. I would narrow it down between compare and contrast and description. Um, I want you to defend why it is one or the other. So passage two, the best PB&J ever. When I got home from school after a long, boring day, I took out the peanut butter, jelly, and bread. After taking the lid off of the jars, I spread the peanut butter on one side of the bread and the jelly on the other, and then I put the two pieces of bread together. After that, I enjoyed it while watching cops on the TV. I swear that was the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich I ever ate. All right, so, we, we definitely have a first I did this, then I did this. So which type of text structure would that best describe? Passage three, Bobby Fisher. Robert James Fisher was born in Chicago but unlocked the secrets of chess in a Brooklyn apartment right above a candy store. At the age of six, he taught himself to play by following the instruction booklet that came with his chessboard. After spending much of his childhood in chess clubs, Fisher said that one day I just got good. That may be a bit of an understatement. At the age of 13, he won the U.S. Junior Chess Championship, becoming the first junior champion ever. At the age of 14, he won the United States Championship and became the youngest U.S. champion in history. Fisher would go on to become the world champion of chess, but he would also grow up to become his own worst enemy. Instead of defending the title, he forfeited it to the next challenger without ever making a move, and the rise of a chess superstar ended with a fizzle. All right, so with this one, it definitely seems like a description. Um, he runs into a problem at the end, but I don't think that that would qualify it for being problem solution. That was just part of the story that was being told here. 
Um, so passage four, save the tigers. This is very Tiger King-esque. Unfortunately, it's not about any of the Tiger King people. So Dr. Miller doesn't want the tigers to vanish. These majestic beasts are disappearing at an alarming rate. Dr. Miller thinks that we should write to our Congress people. If we let them know that we demand the preservation of the species, maybe we can make a difference. Dr. Miller also thinks that we should donate to save the tigers. Our donations will help to support and empower those who are fighting the hardest to preserve the tigers. We owe it to our grandchildren to do something. Um, okay, so Dr. Miller feels that there's a problem with tigers and um, that they're going to go away and vanish. According to Tiger King, did you know that there are more tigers in captivity than there are tigers in the wild? Anywho, back to this. Um, so he, he gives us a problem, and it seems as if he gives us a, a, a solution to the problem. So you just tell me how, why you think that is. All right, so passage five, the Great Recession. Many people are confused about why our economy went to shambles in 2008. The crisis was actually the result of a combination of many complex factors. First, easy credit conditions allow people who are high risk or unworthy of credit to borrow, and even, even people who had no income were eligible for large loans. Second, banks would bundle these toxic loans and sell them as packages on the financial market. Third, large insurance firms bought these packages misrepresenting the risk high loans, these high risk loans as safe investments. Fourth, because of the ease of acquiring credit and the rapid growth in the housing market, people were buying two or three houses intending to sell them for a pr more than what they paid. All of these factors created bubbles of speculation. These bubbles burst, sending the whole market into a downward spiral, causing employees to lose capital and lay off employees. Consumer spending then plummeted and most businesses suffered. The economy is like a big boat, and once it gets moving quickly in the wrong direction, it's hard to turn around. Okay, so um, the Great Recession was definitely a problem, but I don't think that this is a problem solution. Um, it's more of a, well, this is what happened, and this was the effect of what happened. And passage six, the screen protector. Before applying the screen protector, clean the surface of your phone's screen with a soft cloth. Once the surface of your screen is clean, remove the paper backing on the screen protector. Evenly apply the sticky side of the screen protector to your phone screen. Smooth out any air bubble trap on between the protector and the phone screen. Enjoy the added protection. So this seems kind of like the PB&J where it's, well, first you do this, and then you do this. So describe to me why it's like that. Um, so this is your identifying text structures worksheet. If you have any questions, as always, please email me. Have a good day.